All right, hi, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I am not here today. I know that makes you all really, really sad. Um, but um, Mrs. Wells is in for me today. Um, if you have any, uh, if, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, she can help you out. Uh, she knows she knows a good bit of math too. So uh, if you need, if you have any questions, feel free to ask her. Um, or if this is seventh or uh, seventh period, you can feel free to ask Blaine. Tell him to come over and help you guys out a little bit. Um, uh, a couple things. Um, I did post the answers to the um, the two problems that were on the front and back of that worksheet that I gave you on Friday. So if you were struggling with those, um, I know I said I was going to put them on Canvas. I just checked and I forgot to put them on Canvas. So I just did. Now it's 930 on Sunday night. So if you uh, um, if that's something that you want to do during class today, that's completely fine. Just jump back to those and make sure that you um, can get those. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the three problems that for the that were for the homework. Uh, <coughs> uh, so um, hopefully we can start to get a handle on those three by three systems. All right. Um, so let's just kind of go through those three problems real quick. Here's number eight. Here's number eight. So here are my three equations, and I'm just going to talk through the answers so, that you, so you can see. Um, I will say the biggest thing that I see people make mistakes with is just small little computation errors, like forgetting to multiply a certain value or adding wrong or something like that. So um, just make sure that you're, you're being very careful with these things. All right. So uh, here are my three equations. Um, so the first thing that I want to do, or first thing that I see, is that I can eliminate with y's pretty easily, right? Because I have my, I have a one where there's a coefficient of one. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by three to multi to eliminate it with my first two equations to try to get these two together, right? So I multiply this top equation by three, that gives me six x minus three y minus nine z is equal to three, and then I add down. This equation stays the same. So ten x y's cancel negative 7z is equal to negative 1. I'm going to do the exact same thing with equations 2 and, or sorry, equations 1 and 3. I'm going to multiply equation 1 by a negative 2 to get this and this the same. Uh, positive 2. Positive 2. I don't know if it's a negative. 4x minus 2y minus 6z is equal to 2. Is equal to two. Add down, I get a 1x. Cancel. Negative 1z negative one. So then I take this equation and this equation, and I basically just solve that system. Multiply the top equation by bottom equation by negative 10 to get my, you could multiply by pot, negative seven, that would work too. Multiply by negative 10 to get my x's to cancel. This would be a negative 10 x minus, or sorry, plus 10 z is equal to positive 10. So this will cancel, I get a positive three z, positive nine divided by three, z is nine, or z is three, excuse me. Then I take the z is equal to 3, and I plug it back into one of these equations. So x minus 3 is equal to negative 1. Add the 3. x equals 2. And then plug both of them into one of the top two equations. <coughs> Excuse me, top three equations. So x equals 2. z equals 3. So 4 and negative 9. So subtract the 4, add the 9, or just combine like terms, then add the 5. Um, so y is equal to negative 6. So 2 comma negative 6 comma 3. Number nine here, <clears throat> um, I asked you to eliminate with y's again, I believe so. Let me just double check on that. Uh, no, I don't want a pen. Get off your pen. Oh, well. I, I believe I asked you to eliminate with y. Um, so uh, 5x minus 6y uh, plus 2z. So really all I have to do is just multiply this 3 by 2 to get to negative 6. That's why I multiply the whole equation by 2. So 4x plus 6y minus 6z is equal to negative 18. 9, cancel, negative 4, positive 3. Same thing over here. Um, I take, uh, but in this case, I want to multiply this by negative 3 to get to positive 9. So 6x, negative 6x minus 9y uh, plus 9z is equal to positive 27. Negative 9, cancel, positive 5, positive 3. So take this and this, and look at that. It's already set up for elimination, so z is equal to 6. Plug that back in. 9x minus 4 times 6 is equal to 3. 
add the 24 divided by 9 x equals 3 so plug 6 3 into one of the two equations so I have 6 uh, I take that this equation 6 negative 18 combine them to get negative 12 add the 12 to get 3 y is equal to 1 3 comma 1 comma 6 <clears throat> last one here uh, I'm gonna eliminate with my it looks like my Z's uh, nope, that's a lie. I'm eliminate with my X's. Oh, I see, because one of them is already set up for elimination. Really? I didn't eliminate with two and three? Yeah, whatever. Um, okay, so uh, eliminating with one and two, you get a, a multiply by two here. You get a negative four, positive four, positive six, negative 52. So add down here, we get a, an 11, a 5, and then a negative 10. And then here, multiply with a negative 2 to get to 4. So negative 4, positive 6, negative 10, negative 20. So add down, we get a 13, a negative 11, and a, neg and a positive 22. So take these two and eliminate with those. And now again, I am choosing to do elimination here, but just because they're in standard form. But you could have definitely done substitution for these as well. So multiply the top by 11, the bottom by 5. You see what we get here. I add down, I get 186 is equal to 0. 186y is equal to 0. I divide by 186, and y equals 0. Number 0 divided by any number, especially 186, is 0. So plug 0 back in. z is equal to negative 2. Plug negative 2 and 0 in, and I get x equals 10. All right. Now, <clears throat> so we're now jumping into... Um, the good part of chapter four. So like well, that was just section three, six. I know it seems weird that we covered three by three systems in sec in chapter four, but um, I will teach you, I taught you the uh, substitute, the elimination method to solving those three by threes. And by the end of this chapter, I'll teach you uh, something to solve those in, in, involving matrices. And then you'll hate me for all of the work that you've done. You'll want to, you'll want to punch me in the face because it's a lot easier. Um, I'm really bummed that I have to miss this day because this is your introduction into matrices and matrices is like one of the coolest topics of the year. So that makes me really sad that I'm not there with you guys, but I'm there in spirit. So hopefully you just, you enjoy it and just say like, wow, Mr. Laverick, you're doing, this is awesome. And we'll talk about it tomorrow, I guess. Um, okay. So what are matrices? And, and you know, know that, um, if you study math in college and you have to take higher level math courses, you, you take like whole classes on matrices. If you ever have to take what's called a linear algebra class, linear algebra class, that is just a whole, that's a B, a whole class on matrices. Now, the cool thing is, is we actually still teach it, but you know, I'm talking to, um, other teachers at Hoover and at Jackson, and they actually t take out, they actually took out the material about matrices out of the algebra two curriculum because it because it's not technically part of our standards anymore. But me and Mrs. Snapholtz think that this is like, this is a pretty big deal. And a lot of people end up having to take a linear algebra class. So, so I don't know, we think we're preparing you better because we're showing you at least showing you how to compute with matrices. We won't spend too long in chapter four. I think we only do sections four, one, four, two, four, three, and four, five. I think that's it. So just four sections um, in, in chapter four. <clears throat> um, but it's enough to give you a little bit of a basic understanding of matrices. And it, I don't know, might, might help you out somewhere along the line. Um, and you can do, do some pretty cool stuff. So what is a matrix? Well, a matrix is just a rectangular array of numbers. That's really all it is. If you've typed in an Excel sheet, you've made a matrix. That's really it. It's just a rectangular array of numbers. That, that word array is just a fancy way to say grouping. It's just a rectangular grouping of numbers. Um, you know, if, if you've ever used Excel, you have done a matrix. You just haven't really understood it as a matrix. Um, but it's just basically just a way to group numbers so that you can do some cool computations with them. Okay, so let's talk about them. So this is an example of a matrix. 
Um, this matrix A down here has uh, two rows and three columns. A matrix with M rows and N columns has dimensions M by N. So like this, this matrix down here is a, we would call that a two by three matrix, two rows, three columns. It's always row, then column. Um, so it's a, we would call this a two by three matrix, two rows, three columns. Remember rows go side to side, columns go up and down. Okay. Uh, dimension, uh, sorry, each value in a matrix is called an entry of that matrix. So this, this matrix has six entries because it has two, two rows and three columns. Entry one, uh, this, well, we'll talk about addresses in a second, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six um, entries in a matrix. Okay. In, in this matrix A with two rows and three columns. Um, oops. Got too far down there. Um, <clears throat> the address of an entry is the location in a matrix. It's the location. So like if I want to say, if I want to say something about a specific entry um, and I want to talk about it, I want to give the address of that entry. So like, for example, like this 16.206 within matrix A, you would say that that is A21. That's how you would read that. You won't say A21. You would say A21. It's usually the lowercase um, version of that matrix letter. And usually matrices are defined by an uppercase letter, letter. So this is like matrix A, uppercase. And then if I'm talking about the address, I say a lowercase version of that. And then the, the, the numbers are written as a subscript. Um, so you would say A21. That's how you'd read that. You wouldn't say A21. You'd say A21. That tells me that this is in matrix A within row two, column one. Row two, column one. So then you'd go down here say, I'm on row two, column one. This piece right in there. So, um, you know, if I wanted uh, like this one up here, right, that would be little a row one column three, A13. It's a three. A13. That would be 17.318. This uh, right here, that would be A12. This down here would be A23. You know, there's you could give the address by the lowercase letter and then row, then column. Row, then column. All right. So um, just kind of showing you a basic, basic description of a matrix here. The prices for different sandwiches are represented uh, on the right here. So this is just a, just basically a table of values, right? This is really a matrix. That's really all it is. So let's display it in matrix form. So all you're going to do is you're going to make your little brackets. We've got, uh, this is three rows, two columns. So we've got 395, uh, 375, 3.5 for 350, 595, 560, 525. And there's my matrix. There it is. Representing the prices for these sandwiches. Okay. What are the what are the dimensions of P? Oop, apparently it wanted me to call it P. Okay. So what are the dimensions of P? Well, P is a I need to erase this. <coughs> we can call uh, P is a uh, three rows, two columns. P is a three by two matrix, right? Um, when you define, when you talk about dimensions, you use the capital version, and then as subscript, you can write the P three three by two, three x two. Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon my coughing. Okay. <clears throat> What is entry P32? So I'm assuming that this is a lowercase p. Uh, P32. You wouldn't call that P32. So then let's go up here. Let's say, okay. P32, that means row three, column two. Row three, column two, 525. So you would say P32 is five. What did we say? 525? Yeah, 525. I don't know why I changed colors. P32 is 525. What is the address of 595? Okay, let's go back here. 595 right here. 595, row one, column two. One, two. Row one, column two. P, row one, column two. P, one, two. Okay, so that is the address there. Okay, so just some basics on how we talk about these things. All right, now, 
one of the big goals that we'll talk about here is I want you to know how to do basic operations of matrices. I want you to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide matrices. Actually, no, not dividing. Add, subtract, multiply um, matrices. Yeah. And then we'll do some other operations that you don't know what they are yet, but um, we'll, do, we'll talk about basic operations of matrices. So today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting is really easy. Multiplying, that's when it can get a little, <clears throat> get a little weird. Um, so let's talk about adding and subtracting first. Now, um, to add or subtract two matrices, you just add or subtract the corresponding entries. I would go ahead and write this, this piece down in the words. This may look a little weird, so and we'll do a couple examples. So I wouldn't necessarily write these things down, but I would write this down. To add or subtract two matrices, add or subtract the corresponding entries. Now, that's implying something... That's implying something. I guess I can just say that. That's implying something. <clears throat> you can add or subtract two matrices only if they have the same dimensions. Only if they have the same dimensions, because you don't have corresponding entries if they don't have the same dimensions. You know, think about a, a four by four matrix and then a two by two matrix. You know, a four by four has a lot more entries than a two by two. And there's not corresponding entries to go with each one of them. Like these are here. This is a this is a one by two and a one by two. Right. I have a one and a five, a two and a ten. There's corresponding entries. They have the same address. Okay, you can only add or subtract two matrices if they have the same dimensions. So notice here, two by two plus a two by two. Very good. Um, three by one and a three by one. Good. One by two and a two by one. No good. Uh, one by two and a one by three. No good. It has to have the exact same dimensions. So let's talk about adding or subtracting if possible can i take w plus y well this is a two by two and this is a two by two so yes i can add these matrices so let's do it let's add or let's add these matrices <clears throat> so a two by two plus a two by two will yield another two by two because they have to have the same dimensions to get the same um to get the to have corresponding entries. So I'm going to have a two by two plus a two by two equaling another two by two. So I'm going to take a three plus a one, four. I'm going to take a two, or sorry, excuse me, negative two plus a four to get a positive two. I'm going to take a one and a negative two to get a negative one. I'm going to take a zero plus a three to get a three. And there's my answer. Simple as that. Okay. Um, you know, Remember what you're doing there, you know, the formal definition of adding or subtracting is just basically taking the adding or subtracting all entries with the same address. So this is like W11. You add it with Y11. You take W12, add it with Y12. Everybody that has the same address gets added together, right? We just say take the corresponding ones and add them together. Okay, let's see here. Can I add X and Y? Nope. This is a th uh, two rows, three columns. Two by three plus a two by two. No. Have to add the same dimensions. <clears throat> now, to multiply, there's two different multiplication methods, okay? There's one um, where you just multiply a number and then one where you multiply two matrices together. The one where you multiply two matrices together is a little bit more difficult than one where you just multiply a number. So we're going to save the matrix multiplication for tomorrow. You can multiply a matrix by a number. If it's just a single number, that's called scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication. Okay. To find the product of a scalar in a matrix or the scalar product, you multiply each entry by the scalar. So if I'm saying, you know, I want to take four times the entire matrix, right? Or if I want to take seven times the entire matrix, you just take that four, that seven times every entry in that matrix. So it's just as simple as that. So like here, use a scalar product to find the prices if a 10% discount is applied to the prices above. Well, above here. Here's above. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this matrix. I'm going to take those... Um, those shirt prices and sweatshirt prices. This is 7.5, this is 8, this is 9 and 10, and this is 15, 17.5, 20, 22.5. And 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the scalar product um, to find a 10% discount. Now remember, 10% discount is 90% of that price. So really, I'm going to take 90% of all of those prices, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take uh, 0.9 times 7.5. You get 675. 6.75. I'm going to take 0.9 times 15. I'm going to take 0.9 times 15. 13.5. I did not leave myself enough room. I'm going to take 0.9 times 8. 720. I'm going to take 0.9 times 9. 8.1. Take 0.9 times 10. Point or nine dollars. I'm gonna take point nine times seventeen point five. Point nine times seventeen point five. Eighteen seventy five. Point nine times twenty. Eighteen dollars. Point nine times twenty two and a half. Point nine times twenty two and a half. Twenty twenty five. Twenty point two five. So what did I do there? I basically just distributed that scalar to every piece inside that matrix, right? And then I created a new matrix. And basically this is the matrix that has the 90%, well, 10% discount off of everything. Okay. <clears throat> okay. You know, remember that I, I could still put those labels back on, right? There's t-shirt, there's sweatshirt, sweatshirt. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? sweatshirt um and then here's small medium large extra large right those still have that same context that we had, had in that original matrix all right i'm going to give you a minute i want you to try this one out take 3r minus p if possible it's possible okay, i'm going to give you a minute go ahead and try that okay 3R minus P. So 3 times my matrix R. 1, negative 2, 0, 4, 3, 4, minus P. 3, 1, 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is find 3R. This is scalar multiplication, 3 times R. 3, negative 6, 0, 12, 9, 12 minus 3, 1, 2, negative 2, 0, 1. Okay, now I'm just going to subtract corresponding entries. 3 minus 3, 0. Negative 6 minus 1, negative 7. 0 minus 2, negative 2. 12 minus negative 2, 14. 9 minus 0, 9. 12 minus 1, 11. It's a 14 up here. 14. All right. So hopefully this was an interesting lesson. Tomorrow we'll work on actually matrix multiplication. Um, but yeah, this was just a quick overview of basics of matrices. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked, um, hit the subscribe button down below. Like and subscribe. <laughs> My wife is looking at me like I'm a crazy person. <laughs>